Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about performance uh, 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 or competition analysis. So last thing we've done, we talked about demand analysis. So let's go back again to our main here, blueprint. So we are done with demand analysis, with brainstorming keywords. Now we're going to talk about performance analysis and mostly we're talking about the commercial intent of uh, long tail keywords or short tail keywords and uh, w with the cost per click and its uh, its role in fact uh, in fa as, a, as a proxy of uh, commercial intent so we're gonna go all the way down Two, key phrase analysis B, performance analysis. So we would like to see, for example, the not only the click volume, also in some uh, tools they use the click-through rate. Also, we want to see the click quality, of course. So this is the performance analysis, and this is we usually get it from uh, uh, Google Analytics. So we want to see the click quality. So what is the outcome? Conversions and engagement also. I'm going to add here engagement. So through examining outcomes like sales, registrations, or leads through conversion rates, and ideally as well as engagement rate and a duration, engagement to duration, and so on. And ideally, comparing landing page effectiveness through the, the bounce rate and achieved by AB. Uh, usually, we sometimes use bounce rate. We are now uh, more uh, uh, concerned with the engagement uh, matrices, yes, the, the in metrics. Uh, costs, the cost per click and cost per action. Profitability, of course, through the customer lifetime value. So there's different ways of examining performance analysis indeed different ways of examining performance analysis. Uh, you, of course, this is the click volume, but this is demand analysis, but you taking the click through rate instead. So this is now performance. How many clicks out of all the views? This is now performance analysis. Now, how about, uh, this is performance analysis actually obtained at a later stage after launch, mostly, that you can uh, gonna opt for a click quality and we talked about this in previous classes. And you see why I introduced the engagement and Google Analytics. Some of you might say, why did she start right from the beginning with Google Analytics? First of all, because it's a big, big keyword in digital marketing. It's all about Google Analytics. Second, when I come and arrive at this slide, I am not now gonna take you away from this slide and go explain all about this and then go back again It's uh, to uh, the blueprint. Yeah, so this is why I opted to add all that set of slides for this year uh, uh, previous to explaining all this. And this is we talked about, and this I'm sure some of you now know about what this is, the lifetime value, the customer lifetime value models, but um, I don't think that we will have time to cover this. But in any case, competitive analysis here, we have the Moz Keyword Explorer for, for competitive analysis, so you can put a certain competitor key. Uh, 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 uh. First of all, you can see it check uh, your competitor and monitor them, but also uh, you can also put the competitor's URL and extract keyword from those competitors. So that is also another way to brainstorm. And I remember one assignment, I think Simon's group, they were talking about the competitor, competitor websites. From competitor websites, we can get keywords. That's right. But in fact, for competitors' websites, what I would do is put in my head one or two or three or four competitors, right? That I would like, to, if, if you're working for a big client, not a grandpa. So I'm going to put here, for example, the way that I, I'm starting to think about it is basically putting, for example, competitor one, competitor two, competitor three. And then uh, up on top, I'm going to put 
the keyword 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, as much as you want. And look in the, to their website and use some advanced tools like keywords everywhere and see what which one, which keyword is, 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 uh, is ranked one here. So I'm going to put here, uh, for example, I'll put the common keywords among these websites or uh, some of them, they don't have them. I'll put dash. When you have it, I'll put your score for it. For this competitor, this keyword is ranked five, then two, then one, then nothing, then, then, then. This is differently. And I will examine the gaps. I will examine the gaps. Which keywords that uh, some of the competitors did not take, did not use, did not uh, uh, employ. What are some of the keywords that they none of them actually used? So I will focus on these kind of keywords for my branding. So this is used for positioning. Do you remember what I told you in marketing? We have positioning and we have value proposition. Positioning is where you position yourself in the heads of customers. Uh, 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 when you when the customer attempts to compare you with other competitors so where do you stand relative to the competitors and in marketing we actually have a very uh, standardized way all consultants even if you go into the marketing world working in any consultancy marketing consultancy company they use this uh, more a little bit maybe more advanced or, uh, or something but it's this is is, is is based on this skeleton kind of or frame so you will have the list of competitors here and then you'll have whatever criteria or uh, uh, the, 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 the the adjectives that you use to, to, to describe their 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 brand you can extract this from their websites and then uh, you also put other uh, adjectives very popular uh, uh, or the 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 the, uh, the maybe the branding that you want to stand for and see any if any of these and how many of these uh, uh, listed competitors will actually score and how do they score they maybe score but they score like 10 on certain adjectives so you could be scoring as number 1 on on these uh, uh, adjectives or these uh, uh, branding uh, uh, factors that uh, uh, others didn't uh, focus on. So this is also performance analysis. Okay, uh, uh, Keywords Finder. Keywords Finder is also a very important uh, uh, tool that is used for uh, long tail keywords. And now I'm going to uh, explain to you what is a long tail keyword and what is a short tailed uh, uh, keyword. So. As the name implies, short tail keywords are shorter, but we, we already noticed that I use key phrase, key phrase, key phrase, right? So in fact, uh, here uh, I, I am going to um, uh, talk a little bit about how some keywords are a, bit, are a bit like key phrases, but some of these key phrases are even longer than just being a keyword or a key phrase. So there's more yet uh, 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 shorter and shorter keywords. So what makes a short keyword uh, or a short tail keyword a short tail and what makes it a long tail keyword a long tail is not the number of keywords. Surprisingly, it is its position in such a graph. So you will have the number of keywords uh, in the percentage of search traffic, the percentage of traffic here for the uh, keywords that you got so you need the percentage of search traffic. So basically you say for all the search traffic that I got, uh, 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 this, this keyword is responsible for this percentage and that, and that keyword is responsible for higher percentage. Another keyword is responsible for a lower uh, percentage comparatively. And then you have the number of months, uh, monthly searches. So you have here the number of searches and you have here the number of keywords. And of course, what is on the start is the percentage of search traffic. So here, where is the, the, the star here? Here's the star. So you have plotted the number of keywords. So you have a key phrase of five, a key phrase of 10, a key phrase of 15, a key phrase of 20. <laughs> Not to that extent, of course. So you usually have a keyword one, Key phrase two keywords, key phrase three keywords, 
key phrase, four keywords. Key phrase, you got the idea. So this is the number of keywords in the key phrase, okay? So as you are uh, uh, st st uh, moving away from the origin here, from the intercept of the two axes, you, the number of keywords increases. All right, then you are gonna plot the number of monthly searches. All right, and then you are you can find the percentage, which is here. The star is the percentage of search traffic here. So what makes short tail keywords short tail and what makes long tail keywords long tail is actually this percentage uh, uh, of the traffic and also when you plot it relative to the others. So as you can see here, this is high, 18.5%. This is 11.5% lower. And this is high again. So how do, how do you understand? So you understand this by saying, on average, these guys had the highest, 18.5%. So you keep finding the averages of this with this, with the next, with the next, up to finding the optimal uh, cut of value, finding that these keywords are relatively here uh, uh, in within the top 100 keywords and they have a very high search volume as you can see but and then uh, the percentage of search traffic is 18.5 percent on your website you will find out that these keywords that are broad keywords and at the same time that they are uh, just very short you will find out that these short keywords are almost broad so that they are uh, 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 responsible uh, for uh, high monthly search volumes like this. Like sunglasses, if you can bid on sunglasses and it's very expensive, then definitely you will get, sunglasses will get you the highest searches. Okay? So, ne. Then there is the top 500, then the top 1000, then the top 10,000, and so on. You will find out as the number of keywords in the key phrase increases, you will find out the number of monthly ser searches decreases. So, as the number of keywords increases, the number of monthly searches, as you can see, uh, 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 decreases. However, the percentage of search traffic to your site increases. So that is quite interesting. What does this mean? This means if you looking at the general the general uh, uh, overview, you can come up with a general statement that short tail keywords are broad keywords this is the general short tail keywords are broad keywords and they are responsible for the highest monthly searches on on the search engine so this is the, the this is the general like on the search engine you can state that short tail Keywords are considered broad, usually keywords, and they are responsible for the highest monthly searches. Monthly, not monthly. Monthly. You can also, with much confidence, state that long tail keywords are more specific spe spe specific keywords and they are risk or they uh, amount to not responsible actually the language is important they amount to they amount i'll tell you why they amount to uh, 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 relatively relatively lower search volumes. Why did I say relatively? Relative to the whom? 
relative or you know lower search volumes relative to the broader keywords which are the short tail keywords so this is on the search engine these statements statements are correct that short tail keywords are broad keywords and they amount to the highest or they are or they they responsible for okay the highest now long tail keywords are more specific and they are here and they amount to or responsible for the less or lower monthly search volumes now on for your business website what what you can say what what you can say here about short tail keyword keywords but you can also say that they are broad keywords and they are also what we call it the fat head that uh, 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 it brings in that is that 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 accounts that accounts to 18.5 percent of our website traffic do you see that while long tail keywords are more specific spe specific and they amount to 70 percent of our website it traffic do you see that and the rest the rest are responsible for the remaining percentage do you see what what we're talking about here so the way that this could be understood is from the search engine point of view as small the shorter keywords broader keywords have the highest search uh, 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 monthly searches long are the, sh the, the the lower what does this mean this means that more people in this universe more people in this universe search with the broader keywords less people in this universe search with the very 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 specific long tail keywords when you are broad, this means you're confused, aren't you? Like, look at you. When you're doing your thesis, you come up with a topic title that is so broad because you're still not sure, not comfortable, not knowing exactly what you're doing. Once you start really knowing what is it that I'm doing, you start narrowing down and narrowing down and narrowing down. And surprisingly, your title becomes probably longer as you your understanding of what you're doing becomes better because you know that this is exactly the right keywords the right important keywords that can tell you exactly what i'm doing because i know exactly what i'm doing so i know exactly what keywords i need so here you are more specific as a person in the market as a customer okay so how, what about these this means in fact, if you want to have a healthy website, you probably should aim at more traffic coming from long tail compared to short tail. But in which stage of your lifetime cycle? Not at the very beginning when you're still an entrepreneur and really don't know anything about the, about the market. But uh, if you are a very solid business and now established in the market and you know what you're doing, you probably won't even bid on uh, uh, on uh, uh, broad keywords. You're probably gonna opt for long tail keywords, and this is what I'm what I'm gonna do for grandpa uh, 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 client. We're not going to bid much on here, but bid much on here. However, not from the first campaign. First campaign. We're going to talk about this in due course. Trust me, we're going to talk about this, and we have very smart conversations in due course. But these people in the market that keyed in, in the search engine, long tail keywords are more clear about what they want. So they are 
clear about their intent, so they know what they want. So if I know what uh, and what is it that the customer looking for in my product, and not necessarily only the specs, but exactly what they're looking for, and put it in a long tail keyword long enough so that I could get most of my traffic out of this long tail keyword, then I really aced uh, uh, optimizing my uh, traffic. So this is in terms of performance, in terms of the performance of the demand, in terms of the performance of the number of clicks, in terms of performance of that, you actually need to understand how long and short tail keywords work. So in terms of performance, in terms of performance of the demand or demand or performance analysis, you need to have a portfolio of your keywords. These keywords here that you've been doing, this keywords analysis, it's just a baby, baby step keywords analysis because most of the keywords you put here are for a, a, a category. So this is okay. But if we want to write a blog, then it's a different story. And later on, when we have historical data, probably we're going to opt more onto uh, uh, getting more into the long tail keywords. Uh, I'm going to talk about this again and again and again in due course. Now it's maybe the, uh, the, 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 the vision is not very clear. Okay, so this is it. There's other uh, uh, analysis, there's gap analysis and set goal analysis, but please do not forget that when we are going back here, we're actually done here with the commercial intent. Oh, did I talk about commercial intent and long tail keywords? Well, I did when I said that long tail keywords, customers who are keying in long tail keywords, they exactly focus, they exactly know what they want. They have a higher commercial intent compared to those uh, customers who are keying in uh, short tail uh, keywords, very short, uh, they are broad, their, their commercial intent is much less. And do not forget that we want to talk about the growth analysis or we're going to talk about the potential future trends or future potential. So this is very important and this is uh, uh, this amount or this is uh, related to question number five. How are you going to use Google Trends for you to know how what is the future trend for these certain keywords that you have decided on here with the score. For example, if you sorted this and you got the highest score to be sorted on top and you can do this by just, if you want it like that, you just uh, 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 select your uh, uh, populated uh, uh, table, Gominne, and what's happening you guys to me? here and then you go to custom sort and then you go to your score and you want to uh, sort it maybe from highest to lowest and you hit okay so that is uh, that's going to give that's going to bring up the higher scores or that's going to bring the higher scores up <laughs> okay so now i'm going to see you again for a trend analysis for growth analysis and thank you so much